Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Tom Mizzle. You're watching my channel, Mizzle 14, and I'm here doing a review of Love and Hip Hop Miami Season 3, Episode 4. Alright, so it continued from last week. You know, MJ and Julian was going back and forth. We'll talk about how Marla should be getting kids, and Julian said, oh, she's not getting no kids. There's no kids right now. It's her music or something like that. MJ and Julian going back and forth. Meanwhile, Amara was sitting there. Pretty Dollar said, oh, you okay? Amara was like, I can't take this. Oh, it's getting too much. She's like, oh, oh, I was like, oh my god. She said, she's like, she look like she's about to faint, about to pass out. MJ see it. He said, what's going on, baby? What's going on? You see, you good? She said, look like she's about to pass out. Like, what's going on? He said, nothing. I just want to say, she said, well, what's going on? He sat down. I just gotta get clear. I get stuff off my chest. I gotta let him know that he can't be running things like that. And what I had to, what I had to say to him, what I had to say to him, I had to let him know that I'm not the one to mess with. And he ain't gonna screw you over and got you in here look like a fool when I'm here right now. So everything. So basically, he said something that a mom didn't want to say because she about to talk. He said no because I got in my feelings because I'm harboring what she said to me about last time and stuff. And she was like. Shut up. He said, shut up. Shut up. And basically he said that MJ was trying to slide into Amara's bed and touch her leg and try to sleep with her. And I said, ooh. Ooh. Where did this happen? Amara was a beautiful woman. And she is beautiful. So, but yeah, her manager should not be sleeping with her. Well, that happened last. <laughs> In industry, that happens. But. In this kind of age, no, we don't want no Julia and Marla sleeping together. Basically, no. Amala and Julian, every like when they go on the business trips and stuff like that, they get a one hotel room, they sleep in separate beds like they normally do. That particular day, whatever time she was talking about, he got extra drunk. And I said, You can't use that excuse. You can't use that excuse. And slide on her bed and try to touch on everything. Nothing happened, but she felt uncomfortable from that. And I said, yeah, I would feel uncomfortable too. Come on now, you my manager. You got all the high stakes in me. I'm managing my music, my money, and stuff like that. Then you gonna try to take all of this away from me? Try to take all of this from me? No, we not doing that. And then my music ain't going that popping in anyway with you managing me. So how the hell I'm gonna let you try to sleep with me? That is not a good look. And as a manager, whatever. So she was like, oh. So MJ and Mama talked a little bit afterwards. And basically, she still, she still holding on to this Julian that he believed in me, nobody believed in me, and he's just like my brother, he's like my best friend, and I can't do this without him, because he did everything for me, my music, my career, and my everything, and I can't, and I can't, and I said, Mama, come on, you don't need this guy. You can find another manager that, like, I'm telling you, when Mama came into the scene and first season in Love and Hip Hop, I believe this girl could have it, make it big. She make it big in her country. Now she come here, she trying to cross over. She could make it big with her Spanish and her talent and song. That Insecure song was hot. I just hated that they figured screw up that song with that video. I didn't like the video as much. I hated that. But it didn't come out great. Not come out great, but I feel like her stuff didn't pop like we wanted to pop. And it is like what her team was doing. Yeah, she doing a lot of photo shoots. She is making money and stuff like that. So she's not broke. But I just feel like she, it could, she could go to the next level. She could get there. She could get there with the right team, with the right songwriters, the right producing, and right managing, and good videos, and good songs. She could be good. It's not that much competition for her right now. Well, well, in some way, shape, or form, it is a little bit. But it's... She could make it. She could make it. I make it. And it's a beautiful woman. Beautiful black woman. So it's like, Afro Latina woman. Like she said it. So, I believe she can make it big. She needs to find the right person. And that man, that Julian is not right. Because he has a bad reputation. He mismanages Trina. He don't really know who he is. And it seems like he's a perv. And it's, it's just too much. It's, everything is all red flags with Julian. Um, Julian. And Marla is just so stuck on that. He's believed in me. He's the only one who believed in me. And my music and my stuff like that. So MJ said, what are we going to do from here? No, MJ. Amara asked what we're going to do from next. So MJ said, we're going to go to your lawyer. And see what's up, what's going on, and see what we could do with it. He keep putting himself in and say, we, 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 we. I said, boy, you just a boyfriend. You better push it aside. Boy, you just a boyfriend. You not her man. Well, 
her boyfriend, but you're not her husband. So what all this weed coming into it? It's like, yes, you're trying to be the long one and everything, but let her do what she had to do, but you just go be there at her boyfriend and let her know. So Amara and MJ met with her lawyer, Matt. And Matt said he sat down and he spoke to Julia's lawyer. This fool Julian is he's a just fool Julian. He's a snake. And now Marvin realizes that he is no good. Because I don't learn something that I learned something because I'm really not into King with the entertainment business, but I do know a little bit is that when you have a manager and you break ways, you have a contract, and sometimes the contract negotiates what kind of leverage you have with the person's music. Sometimes, like for example, Destiny's Child. Matt Knowles still owns the name Destiny's Child. Beyonce, Kelly, and Michelle could still come together and sing together, but if they ever use that name Destiny's Child, he still owns proceeds, proceeds of whatever they do with that name and everything. So I don't know if they trying to buy that name out. I don't know. They're not a group now. But every time they come there, you should say, oh, Beyonce with Kelly Michelle, or Kelly with Beyonce Michelle, or Michelle with Kelly Beyonce. And sometimes they use their name, Destiny Child. It is that he still has ownership of that name, and he still get paid for whatever they do together as the group Destiny Child. Right? And not like if they come support and be a featuring, but as a group, he still owns that name. So he still has ownership to that. Just like... A lot of other producers have ownerships to a person's music and stuff. So, I know a little bit about that. So, in the contract, Matt told Amara that Julian won 100% of the masters. The music, anything they had developed that five years playing, that he, she, he helped manage, he won 100% of it. I heard it's 100%. That means she have a lot, if she had a lot of 30 plus songs that she never released, he has ownership to it. He could release an album without her, without her permission because he has ownership to it. 100%? You're going to take 100% of her masters. So that means nothing that worked them together is on her control. She can take none of her music with her. Well, she can. But it's, if she does, he will still have some ownership to it. I was like, wow. So he said he's going to do as best as he can to make... The lawyer said he's going to do what best as he can to make sure... It works away that you won't get nothing. And it goes in your favor. Because she's like, I can't believe it. You trying to do this to me. You trying to betray me. Because I thought Julia is my friend. And he was my friend. I said, well, you can't be friends with managers like that. Especially when you have contract and you got money involved. Sometimes you got to air on that. That friendship has got to be a little bit leeway. It's got to be a little bit. You can't use that too much. Because at the end of the day, friend... And at the end of the day, he is your manager. So it is the professional guidelines he had to follow. And now lines could be blurred between friends and manager that could take advantage. And that's exactly what's probably it is like now. I've gone almost like almost 10 minutes with Marvel. But the rest of the episode wasn't one that. So that is what it is <laughs> to me. All right. So Hood Brat, you know, they was at the still at um, Briscoe party. Hoodbrat told Suki, he said, listen, because Hoodbrat is cool with Suki. They're good friends. Now, Nikki was doing all this popping to Hoodbrat, not knowing that they're good friends. Hoodbrat and Nikki only cool a little bit, but they're not that cool. But when she was going off, he said, I'm better than all these females and everything. So Hoodbrat said, you better than Suki? She said, yeah, I'm better than Suki. Now. I said, no, you was not. Girl, you was elementary. Suki was okay. Suki was good. She did this. She came performing. She did everything. She did her the other day. I still try to understand what the hell she was saying, but I know she was saying something freaky. Cause Suki, every time you see freaky, Suki say something freaky. So you didn't do better than Suki at all. Not in no way, shape, or form. For you to be all like, yes, you gotta have confidence as an artist. You gotta have a confidence. You gotta have that confidence. But to put down on like artist to break yourself up, that's not good luck at all. I'm not gonna go out here and try to put down some other artist just to make myself look good. I said, oh well. I'm better than her. She can't rap. She can't sing. I do this better than her. I said, no. I do my best as I can. I have great, I like fans who love my music. And I'm going to tune you on. And best success for everybody else. So, her brother told Suki. Suki was like, oh, okay. So, she went to the table. Say hi to Briscoe. She said hi to Shane. She said hi to um, Nikki. 
So to Nikki, and it said, listen, I'm heard that this whole book is hooked back told me this, this hook back told me that. This is true that you said this. Is it true that you said you're better than me? All that stuff. And it was like, at the end of the day, so Shane said, well, it's not, it's not bad for her to bigger herself, but I don't think she's trying to throw you or put you down. Because she said, no, nah, I will be, it was saying, I will be what, not, throw none of her a person in the bus. I will be what own up to the set and say, good, I did my thing and good luck to everybody else. I will be what do that. I will be not to put somebody, um, put somebody down. And... Shay got in the middle of it. I said, Shay, it was not your battle. Nikki has mouth. She Nikki had mouth ever since um that Trina episode. She has mouth. So she could defend herself. She don't need you. The so fact you put yourself in the middle, May Suki fire at you. And now you said, I always I always respect the underdog. I didn't like how Suki came and come out, Nikki, everything. I was like, what? why is your battle? Avenger Tang, why is your battle? Why is that is your battle, girl? I don't understand. Shay, I don't understand, Shay. I may not understand the Langatain. Come on now. <laughs> so they got at it. And she said, mind your business, I'm mind your business. Meanwhile, Suki had left the phone on the table. But they was going at it. Suki did something and just flapped her thing at Shay. And they went a little bit. You know, Shay always grabs something. Cause I said, you can't fight Shay. She never going to have no souvenir of you. She got wigs, things, all that stuff on her hair. So she took a piece. She had a piece of Suki's. Blouse thing that was hanging on her arms. And she took a piece of that. She ripped that off. And then Suki was going off. He said, ah, you animal. I'm going to call animal troll. I said, yes, she's an animal troll. And I said, Langatang, you need to put her back in the zoo. <laughs> yes, I told you she's animal control. She's ugly. <laughs> yes, call animal troll. Now, we better get them here. Tranquilize that chick. and get her to sleep. She needs to go to sleep so you go back to her freaking habitat. I like, so, um, uh, Ugwin, while they was beefing and doing all this craziness, Nikki snatched the phone. And we didn't see it at the time, but they did a playback. Sneaky, Nikki, I said sneaky. See, that's what it was. She was sneaky at that time. Nikki took Suki's phone and took it with her. I was like, wow, you gonna steal somebody's phone? Really, girl? Really? So they going on back and forth. They ended that. That was ending the party. Next was... So Prima Pigley, aka Jocelyn Words, <laughs> Prima Donna, Prima Donna is having a launch party. She want to let everybody know about her freaking waist trainer, her pressure cooker, her seasons, and so like that. I said, well, they showed all that items at the end of, uh, end of this episode. It looked like they was all generic. I was like, what is this? What is the brand? I don't even see the brand name on it. I don't know. Maybe I, it wasn't on it. It just looked too bland to me. It looked like another bottle that just plastered her name on it. So, um, so she had a launch party. And she met up with Tip. And her and Tip talk, about, talk a little bit. And Tip feel like she just left her. Like she just left Miami to forget all about her friends. She said, I'm sorry if you feel like. I said, no, see, that's not an apology. She felt that way because you left her and you stopped talking to her. Like you just completely cut communication. So, and not sorry if I make you feel. No, no. I'm sorry that I left and not acknowledge you because I was on my ten of visions. I was just doing me. I had a focus on my brand. I came from this area. People thought I was just one way. I had to prove to them. I had to show them that I can make it. I'm a businesswoman. All that stuff. I said, congratulations. No more knocking that. But don't knock your friends when you go and want to make it up. I said, listen. It is what it is. So she came back. She apologized. She invited and tipped to her um, launch party. So good. Good. They talk about how Suki, how Tip said she got to get Wayne Suki in and make sure she's not going to have her Instagram reputation affect her future career in music. And I said, hey, I mean, that's her middle bag. At the end of the day, that's how she got famous. That's just, I know she's making money out of it and doing sponsorships and deals and everything because of uh, social media platform. And I know she has money and I know she does other things. So she, that's going to be a little good bag. You can't knock that out. But yes, I understand that. You don't want that to be completely determination of you as an artist because you got to step in a new arena, a new field. So Tip met with Suki at a seafood spot. Suki said, hey, what's going on, y'all? I said, you know, Suki, I love Suki. Like, <laughs> I got to follow her because she is funny. So she said, oh, you cute. What's your girlfriend at? You got a girlfriend? Okay, cool, guy. I was like, oh, all right, Suki. So she said she's hungry. So Tip already started eating. I said, damn, Tip, you can't wait for Suki. <laughs> so I guess that food was good. So she, Tip was 
So as you can say, I, like, I want some crab legs, I want some corn and carb, oh yeah, I want some mussels, I want some shrimps, I want some potatoes, yeah, I want all that, boom, 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 boom. And I was like, oh, you was ordering a whole menu, girl. <laughs> so they talk, and Tip was telling Suki about everything, and Suki was like, oh, okay. Mm. But she did say her phone got missing, somebody stole her phone. She said, oh, your phone is stolen? She said she don't know if it's Shay, aka Orangutan, or Nikki. And I was like, so, um... That was actually Shane and Nikki met at the park. And Nikki was playing basketball with her three boys, which I like. That's nice. That was a nice scene playing basketball with her three sons. They was cool. Shay was there. I said, oh, so Shay and Nikki is going to be this little um, clickish now. And Shay said she always represented them um, under doors because she didn't like how Suki Hana came with all that petty business. I said, you are you the one to talk because you wanted the queen of the pettiness of the show. So Shay, you need to sit down. Sit down, pop the kettle black. You are the same one as coming with petty arguments. Just now, last two weeks, you talk about freaking Marvel with her bringing her friend and you ain't trying to make her be a friend with someone. But if you be friends with her and I see what your lawyers say, oh, we can't be no best friends, that's petty right there. So you just talk about the Suki being petty? Come on now, whatever. So they finished talking. So Nikki introduced her son's name. We got Carlos. We got Santana. I said, oh, okay, that's regular names Carlos Santana. They've got million. I said, oh. So you got normal names with these two, but where the million came from? That's a tag name, a nickname, or something. <laughs> I mean, it's a cute little boy, don't get me wrong, but million? Okay, Carlos, Santana, million. I was like, oh, okay. And they all got three different fathers. I said, oh, okay, Nikki. Uh, uh, uh. All right. And then she was trying to brag like, oh, none of them had any other kids and this, I'm the only one. I don't know what she was trying to say with that. But I said, that's no bragging rights that you have three different fathers. The baby daddy's like, like different fathers. Oh, girl. <laughs> you got three different baby daddies like that. Well, it's not, it's normal. Hey, this day and age, it's normal that kids have different fathers. The same birth under the same woman had different fathers. So it's not uncommon that it happening. But don't make them bragging like that. It is that, oh, you the only one got the boys. It's out there. No, they don't have none of the kids. That's the only one. Maybe it is. And it's what it is. All right, so, and they talked a little bit. We find out Nikki had the phone, and they were trying to clown Suki. It is what it is. I didn't care about that scene. Joy and Trick <laughs> talk, and Joy said, we cool. We still, even though we're not together, we still family. I, my niece's nephews. His kids, they all good along. They grew up together. They like, we family. Everything. So, Joy came to try and clear up the thing with the Nikki. She was like, listen, I made a mistake. I probably took it on. But, let's go clear it up that they didn't smash. They didn't do anything. He said, oh, okay. She said, well, I think you like Nikki. So, you could get back with her. He said, why are you telling me? Well, it cleared up. So, you could get back with her because you was mad. Because now she said, nah. He basically trick was done with Nikki anyway. Because even if Briscoe smashed or not, even Trick said that. He said, even if Briscoe did smash, he didn't want Nikki. Nikki was too she was too turned up. She that played that innocent act, the innocent act that we first met her, was not Nikki natural at all. Nikki canceled, like I said. She he was done with her. So he said, um, she's good. Bye bye. And so, <laughs> so he not dealing with her. She said, What you want? Who you like? He said, Look in the mirror. I said, Oh yeah. So now Joy realized that Trick was not holding off the divorce because of money. He holding off the divorce because he still has a feeling for her and he loves her and other thing. But she's still trying to do what she got to do to get this ending. But move forward and just make sure that they can still maintain their friendship and that family bond that they have built all these years. And not diminish that because if they get divorced. All right. Uh, what was the last thing? All right. So Prima Donna Party. Oh, Jocelyn was. Oh, before that. So, Jocelyn, uh, Trina, and Joy met up. All right, and they talk, and they talk about everything, and they talk about the launch party. So, when that name came up, well, well Joy rehashed about what happened at um, Briscoe party. And then, she talked about um, Prima Donna. Oh, so, Jocelyn said, oh, Prima Vigley? So, Jay said, what you don't like about her? She said, I don't like when people trying to bad muffin people and probably put other people down. It's like, she, I had a problem with her, but she had a problem with me. So when she got a problem with me, I'm going to come and, ask, come and get her and everything. So you know Jocelyn got to do what she got to do. You come at her, she will come at you tenfold. So she had all these problems, all that big. So 
Trina said, maybe it was a misunderstanding. Maybe you got things the wrong way. Have you sit down and talk to her. Maybe it's not that sit deep with that thing. She said, I don't care. And I'm going to call her. I'm going to have, I'm going to be, she have a party. And I have a gift for her. I had a gift. I was like, Joshua, what the hell you was doing? <laughs> and Trina and Joy was like, Lord, pray for this girl, Prima, because Joshua is too much. All right, so the party. I said, first of all, it was all white. And then she come in them look like a, I said, prima donna. I said, I know, you're a big girl. But that green Christmas tree outfit you was having did not look right. You could have wear white like everybody else that had some green stuff on it if you wanted to have weapons of some money. Because you with that green did not look right at all, at all boo boo. With that, not with the blonde hair you had, with that green, it looked like a Christmas tree. Just like Medea said with that girl, so she would chop, the, chop her up in the lighter. That's what she... That's what you look like, kind of look, with the shiny green. I didn't like it at all. I don't know, maybe somebody did like her dress, but I didn't like it at all. And that green did not look white on her. Trick came with a white t-shirt. He ain't wear the all white. Briscoe came. Briscoe looking nice too, with his all white on. And, oh, I forgot, Briscoe and her brat talk, and they had a good conversation. Her brat said about, talk about her niece and nephew, and take care of them, and making sure they all like. And do what she got to do. She has she has to visit her sister grave because she feel like she has to accomplish what her sister asked her to do. So until so she accomplished that, then she go visit her grave. And she had a little scene in the park scene with the niece and nephew, Queen and King. Oh, I was like, oh. And when Hookback was talking to her um, niece and nephew, and she started telling her, she said, you about to cry. I said, oh. So that was that. That was that little scene. And she said, whatever well, we gotta do, I gonna do as much as you can because I know y'all wanna live with me 24-7. They stay with their other aunt, Marjorie, at the same complex until she get what she needs to get and do what she had to do to make a better life for her her and her niece and nephew. So I said, that's good, that's good. That's a candy to the kids. So back to the party. They all came. Tip came with her little nice little outfit. So while Prima was talking, a van truck was coming in. And I said, where's this truck coming from? It's a truck. So Jocelyn said she had a gift. Jocelyn, the video came up. Supreme was like, what? Uh -uh, what's, what? What's going on? And she said, open the trunk, open the trunk. And then when they tried to open the trunk, that's how it ended. I don't know. Maybe my thing ended. So I don't know if it showed anything. But based on the previews, I obviously know what the hell it was. And they showed a pig. So it didn't show this episode. But I said, yeah, we, she know Josh should call her Prima Pickley, so she gonna give him a pig. I was like, oh my gosh. Tip said, don't open that trunk, it'll be a bomb girl. I said, you better not open that trunk, let that trunk go somewhere else. I mean, but I was loving Hip Hop Miami, y'all. If I miss anything, please put a comment section below. Please like, comment, subscribe to my channel. I'll talk to y'all later. Peace.